How many cells are there in this image? What if you were to adjust your brightness or go and get a coffee first? As humans, we're inconsistent. Now let's make this a little bit more tricky. Here we've added a green layer to this image. Now could you tell me the number of red cells that are also green? I mean, I'm sure you could, but this may take anywhere between five and 10 minutes, which is a bit tedious, but not too bad. What if I ask you to do this a hundred times? Surely not, your time is valuable. This is the problem that we're trying to solve. Neuroscientists look at images like these all the time, and it's a vital part of their research. We're students from the Department of Computing at Imperial. I'm Tiger, this is Will, June, Rasika, and Kelvin. We've been working alongside researchers at Cambridge University Department of Neuroscience to help them with their research. We've developed a tool, Simple Cells, that improves their process on two fronts, time and consistency. So what our clients at the University of Cambridge have been doing is gene therapy research to come up with life-saving treatments such as the one behind me. One part of their research is counting cells, like Will described previously. What exactly is going on here is that our clients first have microscope images of um, their experiments where they stain the cells they want to target in red, uh, such as like this, and then they stain the carriers, so what inserts the gene therapy into the cells uh, in green. And the researchers want to investigate co-localization, which basically means how much of these carriers actually target the cells. Uh, what is shown on the microscope images as a result is that green, the green carriers overlap the red target cells. So you'll see yellow on the microscope images. So right now, researchers use a piece of software called ImageJ to manually count cells. So as Tiger is doing here, you can see that he's using the mouse to find each cell. And this is obviously a very tedious and time-consuming and human, uh, prone to human error. But with simple cells, as you can see on Will's screen, all you have to do is click one button and it will segment each cell. This is essential for the next step in co-localization. So how did we achieve this? The key process in identifying cells is segmentation, which means separating the cells from the background. The first step is to apply a thresholding algorithm, which converts the image to black and white, where white represents cells and black represents the background. Then we remove some of the speckles by applying something called a median filter. Then, we need to merge together some of the cells that have been separated into different sections by blurring the image, and then we crisp up the edges of those cells again. Finally, to separate some of the cells that have been merged together, we apply the classical segmentation algorithm known as the watershed algorithm, which will separate those cells. So, it's these computer vision techniques that form our segmentation pipeline, which can identify cells. When it comes to manually identifying co-localization, it's very much the same process as before. So if we look at Rasika's screen, she also has to flick between the two channels to find cells that are both green and red. This lends itself to even more inconsistencies. But with simple co-localization, like in Will's screen, we can see that again, all it takes is a click of one button to find cells that are co-localized. Simple cells opens up many, many avenues for researchers, like our clients. First of all, they could use the simple cell counter to calculate how many cells have recovered after something caused many cells to die off. Alternatively, they could use simple co-localization to determine the efficacy of a specific gene therapy where they're targeting circular or round cells. As well as this, they can run this in batch mode on hundreds or thousands of images all at once. The first thing we'd like to do in terms of future work is to use artificial neural networks in order to improve the accuracy of cell identification. To do so, we would need more training data, but this is look something we're looking to get our hands on in future. Secondly, we're looking to generalize our plugins to other cell types which our researchers haven't used so far, such as astrocytes. And by doing so, we will make simple cells much more useful to researchers all around the world. Thanks so much for watching. We hope, we hope you enjoyed this video. You can find the GitHub link in the description. And remember to follow Doc on Twitter and subscribe to the YouTube channel.